Hello everyone, welcome to Anthropology Analytica. I am Dr. Arjun Bopanna, Anthropology Faculty at Insights IAS. So in today's video, we will be trying to understand this concept called as epigenetics or epigenome. This is very useful uh, to understand genetic principles. A question can be asked as a 10 marker in the future or even a question relating to epigenetics or epigenome and its application and how it is useful in understanding genetic principle can be asked as a 10 or a 20, uh, 15 marker question. So in that context, let's try to understand what is this epigenetics and what is this epigenetic or epigenome. Now let me take the example and try to explain it in a very simple term. So you might have heard about the identical twin and they almost uh, completely possess uh, uh, a similar uh, uh, genetic makeup. So genetically and identical twins are uh, very much alike. In spite of them being alike, there are a lot of uh, differences in their phenotype. Okay, say take for example, one twin may be very good in sports while the other twin may not be. Uh, uh, one twin may suffer from uh, heart disease while the other twin may be uh, very uh, you know athletic and will be running a marathon etc. So why in spite of having similar genetic makeup uh, their phenotype is different. So there could be several factors. One factor obviously is the environment. So if the environment in which they are uh, you know growing up is different obviously their phenotypic expression will be different. Another factor which leads to difference in the expression of genotype is your epigenome or epigenetics. So studying that difference and trying to understand why the gene expression is different comes under the scope of epigenetics. So basically epigenome or uh, epigenetics is uh, there are cellular mechanisms okay, which can switch on and switch off the expression of gene. Let me explain to you again in a very simple term. So you have the genes, okay, that's there in the chromosome and all that. So you have the gene. The gene, whether it is going to be expressed or not, that is it is going to be switched on or off, is going to be decided by certain cellular mechanisms, all right. So study of those cellular mechanism is called as epigenetics. If you look at this diagram, so you have the gene, you have the uh, gene sequence. Okay, whether that gene gets activated, which ultimately leads to the production of protein, right? So gene activation or not getting activated is going to be decided by certain cellular mechanism. So the study of this cellular mechanism is epigenetics and there are certain cellular mechanism which switches on and off this gene expression that is called as your epigenome. Alright, so that is what is the essence of this. So let us try to understand what is the mechanism behind epigenetics, what is the application of it okay, in understanding genetic principle and how can it be used to improve human health. So from anthropological point of view also, since we study about human genetics and the human uh, genetic expression and the phenotype and inheritance of genetic uh, characters, I mean genetic traits. So in that context, this becomes a very probable question in your future exam. So uh, yeah, so same genes are expressed differently. Okay, why? Because there are mechanisms which regulates their expression. That means their uh, epigenetics is the study of how cells control gene activity without changing D DNA sequence. So the same DNA sequence is expressed differently in different individuals or it is expressed differently in our own cells. See, we have the same gene sequence in all our cells, but in few cells, some gene sequence get expressed, in the other cells, they don't get expressed. Okay, so there is differential expression within our self itself because in some cells they get activated, in some cells they are not. Now, let me give you an example to help you understand this. So you have your muscle cells and you have your bone cells, let's say. So calcification and formation of bones are regulated by genes. Okay. Now, uh, this 
gene is present in both the cells that is in uh, muscle cell also and in bone cell also but they are not activated in muscle cells they are activated only in the bone cells to produce bones to produce calcification so that is regulated by epigenomes or epigenetics so the study of how the gene expression is controlled in a cell is called as epigenetics is it understood so they regulate whether a gene is turned on or turned off so within the complete set of dna in a cell all the modification that regulates the activity of the gene is known as epigenome so all that uh, takes place within the cell that ultimately leads to whether the gene gets activated or not is called as epigenome so this is what is epigenetics so if you look at this diagram over here you'll understand so you your cell will contain dna all right so that basically contains the recipe for the production of protein and protein ultimately uh, fulfills certain functions okay so all our bodily functions are regulated controlled by the proteins so the production of protein is controlled by the dna which is there in our cell okay so now epigenetic marks are there in these cells okay which gets activated or which regulates whether this gene should get activated or not so epigenetic marks tell the rna how to use the recipe that to produce that protein some are inherited and some are acquired so we can inherit this epigenome or epigenetic marks from our parents we can also develop our own because of the environmental conditions okay see for example cancer today research has shown that some cells multiply abnormally giving leading to cancer this could be because of the epigenetic markers or epigenetic epigenomes which we have inherited we have acquired as a result of smoking as a result of environmental pollution so these epigenetic mark tells the rna how or how much or what kind of protein that has to be produced so these are either inherited or they are acquired so your cell will then send signals to modify the epigenetic marker so that they can produce the correct protein in the correct environment so when there is a change in environment let's say pollution smoking alcohol etc so your body starts to react to that and starts to uh, tell the cell that yes we need to produce this protein and then there is extra pro production of these kind of protein so the rna then reads the dna like the chef reading the recipe and helps in the production of protein rna and protein can be epigenetically modified directly so then the protein starts to be produced once the protein excess is there then the cell sends signals to modify the ingredients they receive to match the environment so there are various environmental factors other than we inheriting this epigenetic from our parents that can regulate the uh, production of protein by differentially expressing the dna in our body right so coming back to a little bit context and the history of epigenetics so this was coined by Waddington in 1942 which refers to the study of the casual mechanism by which the genes of the genotype bring about phenotypic effect so how the genotype is going to be uh, you know uh, express i mean how it is going to express and uh, give rise to phenotype so an epigenetic system is heritated uh, uh, heritable that means we inherited or self perpetuating and it is reversible when the environmental conditions changes it can reverse and it this is what makes us unique okay another definition is the study of mechanism of temporal and spatial control of gene activity during the development of complex organisms so i hope you understood that epigenetics help us helps the uh, cell in expressing a particular genotype okay then what is the importance so this is what makes us unique i gave the example of identical twin in the beginning of this video so even though identical twin has the same genotype yet phenotypically they may be different so this is what makes us unique because they are expressed differently because they need to adapt to the environment okay second it ensures that the right protein is produced in the cells okay so every cell will have a copy of the gene 
but what gene needs to be activated in a particular cell again is decided by epigenome. It also promotes health, growth and development. So the right and adequate timely um, you know, cellular mechanism will lead to expression of genes and it will prevent all other diseases like diabetes or schizophrenia or whatever. So all these diseases in a way has been shown to be controlled by epigenome. But there is also an issue with that epigenomes that if it is not proper or if there is any abnormalities in the cellular mechanism, it can then lead to diseases. So today research are being done to identify uh, epigenomes uh, which leads to uh, cancer, uh, which leads to mental depressions, etc. So identifying these epigenomes and then making alteration to them can help uh, address various diseases. Now, uh, there are two main mechanisms through which this uh, uh, epigenomes are, uh, epigen uh, epigenetics is happening. So one is your DNA methylation. So if you look at this diagram over here, you might have read about DNA methylation. Okay, so a methyl group is added to the uh, uh, DNA or the chromosome. Uh, so presence of DNA methylation will actually reduce the expression of the genotype and less methylation means more expression of the genotype. Similarly, one more mechanism through which uh, genotype expression is influenced is histone modification. So you have these histone proteins right around which the uh, you know chromosome is coiled around or the DNA is coiled around. So depending upon how tightly it is coiled around the histone uh, protein, uh, it affects the expression of the gene. If it is tightly wound around the histone protein, then the expression is lesser. If it is loosely tied around, wound around the histone protein, then the gene is expressed more. Okay, so it is easily exposed. So therefore, the proteins and the RNA binding takes place and then in turn, the protein production is greater. So these are the two mechanisms of your uh, uh, you know, the, through which the uh, genotype expression is altered. Now it has got wide application. I mean, scientists are still at the uh, very uh, nascent level of this uh, field. So it is uh, an emerging field and there's a lot of hope with respect to what it can achieve with improving of health. So we will be able to better understand genetics and how genes are expressed and how their transmission is uh, affected. It also helps us, that's what, so uh, transmission of uh, these epigenetics helps us to understand how a particular trait or how a particular phenotype is transmitted from, uh, from one generation to another. It also helps us to understand the diseases and the pathophysiology behind diseases. What are the causes, whether it is genetic, whether it is environment and how environment influences the genetics, etc. So, uh, research are being done in cancer, diabetic studies, heart diseases, mental health, etc. It also helps us to understand uh, the reason behind aging and how abnormal proteins are produced as age increases and one of the factors could be this. Uh, it also helps us to understand human development and ultimate aim and objective of this is to improve human health by understanding the cause and then taking adequate actions and intervening to prevent diseases. Okay, uh, so there are several studies across the world that is being conducted in order to understand uh, epigenetics and uh, one such example has been mentioned over here. So studies are being conducted to understand, uh, uh, you know, about uh, addiction. So addiction arises due to neuroepigenetic mechanism and occurs over a time when you are exposed to additive stimulus like morphine, cocaine, sexual intercourse, gambling, etc. So this leads to production or activation of neuroepigenetics and this in turn leads to production of uh, certain uh, uh, neurohormones which leads to uh, continuous dependence on these chemicals leading to addiction. So somebody who wants to uh, you know uh, get uh, de-addiction help so today or maybe in the future, we probably can have medicines which will directly stimulate these uh, neuroepigenetics and, uh, uh, you know, and try to uh, help such individuals. So such uh, programs and millions of dollars are now being uh, funded. Uh, one such project is called as Human Epigenome Project. Uh, so this uh, is uh, how epigenomes are, um, you know, uh, being helped. Uh, 
uh, are being uh, used to improve our health. Uh, so this is about uh, uh, epigenomes. I hope uh, it was useful. I hope you understood about it. Uh, in the future, if you get a question directly on this, uh, please make sure that you write all these points. If something about genetics and uh, genetic principles is asked, make sure that uh, you know you add a few to uh, points from this as current relevance. Okay, it will make your answer more comprehensive. Uh, I hope it was useful. In the next video, we will be discussing the next question that is discuss the relevance of biological anthropology in contemporary India. Thank you for watching and have a good day.